Okay, hi everyone. Today, Kim Sai and I will be going through with you the algorithm behind GrabShare. So the GrabShare algorithm originated from a problem. And the problem is how can ride sharing maximize driver utilization and reduce traffic congestion in the city? At the same time, allow passengers to spend less while enabling drivers to earn more. So what Grab came up with is a real-time carpooling, carpooling system known as GrabShare. And then GrabShare car carpooling algorithm matches the travelers with similar itineraries in both time and geographic, geographic location. So there's three parts to this GrabShare algorithm, which is assigning of GrabShare booking, then throwing it into the optimization model to measure the, me the quality of the match, and then lastly, the route selection criteria. But for due to the interest of time, two of us will only go through the first and second part of the algorithm. So how, the algor how does the algorithm work? The GrabShare booking assignment flow is quite similar to the GrabCar booking assignment flow. And the GrabCar Grab booking assignment flow goes like this. For every generated GrabCar booking, find the nearby available GrabCar driver. And if there are available GrabCar drivers, then assign the best driver to the passenger. Else, recycle the booking to the next round of broadcasting and assignment. But for GrabShare, there's more variables to consider. For example, whether there's nearby in transit GrabShare and whether the seat capacity uh, is enough to meet the re required capacity of the new booking. So now I'll bring, be bringing you through line by line of how the GrabShare booking assignment flow works. So how the algorithm works for GrabShare um, assignment flow is that for every generated GrabShare booking, you find a nearby interest GrabShare driver of uh, of dri oh, me? Sorry. Find nearby interest seat grab share driver of vehicle DRJ and check for the seat availability condition. So how Grab checks for the seat availability condition is by taking whether the capacity of taxi is more or equal to the current occupied capacity of the vehicle plus the required capacity of the booking. And then if there is existing match, for, if, if, it, if it exists, then find the matching pair and then update the occupied passenger by taking the occupied passenger plus the required capacity. And else, if the recycle booking to, if else there's no uh, existing um, suitable match pair, you recycle the booking to the next round of broadcasting assignment. And then you end the uh, if statement and end the for statement. So now I'll passing, be passing my time to Kim Tsai to talk about the second part of the algorithm. Thanks, Sophia. So the second part of the algorithm actually talks about the optimization plan for the grab share. So essentially, they'll be split into four parts, namely the detour, overlap, trip angle, as well as the efficiency of that um, matching. So for detour-wise, right, uh, for grab, right, they'll actually determine whether which method would be preferred. So for this case, uh, whether it's U-turn is preferred or making a large detour is preferred. So according to their research, it's, they actually found out that making a U-turn for like as short as five minutes is less preferred as people actually make a detour for 10 minutes. Because by making a U-turn, the uh, customers will actually think that, hey, I'm, you are wasting my time. I shouldn't be wasting like taking like this grab share at all. So that's the reason why they actually prefer a detour method rather than a U-turn method. Over, following which will be the overlapping part. So how did they actually measure the overlap would be to actually find the common itinerary routes and then make sure that there will be certain form of overlapping to in increase the efficiency, which will be covered in part four. So this uh, diagram here actually shows the worst case scenario where there is no overlap. In this case, it will be the first passenger will actually reach the destination and then following which the, they will actually pick up the second passenger and then the cycle goes on. So this actually shows that there is no overlap and this will not be a suitable match for grab share. Following which will be the trip angle. So what, this, what does this trip angle mean right, is that they actually have this arbitrary angle for them to actually maneuver around such that it wouldn't be too much, too far off to become like a U-turn and it seems to be like a detour instead. After which, last but not least, we do actually have this thing called the efficiency. So it is, it is actually quite similar with part two, where it actually talks about the overlapping. 
So in Grab, they actually have this thing called the efficiency index, where they will actually compare the distance traveled by passenger if they were to travel separately over the distance traveled through carpooling. So the base index will be one in which that the one will be the worst case scenario where there is no overlap as shown in this uh, diagram here. So there's no overlap. That, therefore, the efficiency, efficiency index will be one. So if the efficiency index gets higher, it will be a more preferred match for the uh, grab share. So after applying all these utility constraints, you will see that it actually helps in improving the overall customer experience by actually minimizing the delay that's taken for, uh, for them to actually fetch another customer. And how does this overall complexity uh, for grab share, right? It is ON uh, after all. So how did they actually grab, uh, get to ON is through this uh, rules here. After applying through all the complexity and also like uh, the constraint, they will actually reach a level of ON. Uh, if you're interested to know more about how this grab share complexity uh, works, I can, actually talk, uh, I can actually share with you a report after class. So in conclusion, how does this grab share uh, helps in improving our day-to-day -day life is to make full use of this real-time integration uh, data through a collection of a uh, vast variety of data and for, following that, they will actually kind of like compute the similar routes and plan accordingly. With that, we actually end our presentation. So how do they price it? Um, pricing wise will be based on like the uh, location. Yeah. And there might be some surcharge from there. So it might be across there might be different pricing across the street as well. So for example if I would stand at SMU, the pricing might be different if I would stand at food rep. But this is a, like a black box uh, algorithm where they didn't disclose it in details. Alright. Alright, thank you, King Chan. It's okay.